Okay, listen. I already got asked a question. Page 180 is on the back of 179. So the homework paper we were on yesterday, these problems are on the back. So that's why I didn't have you rip it out. It's on the other side of the page you already ripped out. Okay. So what we learned yesterday is quadratic formula. Okay. And we have a quiz tomorrow on just this section. And I will give you quadratic formula tomorrow. Okay. So let's write it again. What? Thanks. The discriminant. It's a big fancy word. Okay, so guys, catch up. Catch up, catch up. So none of the problems I assigned today are actually doing the quadratic formula. But what we did yesterday was the quadratic formula where we were given an equation in standard form. So remember that would be ax squared plus bx plus c. And remember we could identify the a, the b, the c, and plug it in. And we practiced simplifying it, okay? And if if you get finished in time, and you really should be able to, these problems are a lot shorter. If you need any help with yesterday's quadratics using the formula, let me know. I'll help you one-on-one. -on -one. I'll sit with you and see what you're doing wrong or help you with whatever step you need, okay? Um, and then, so what we're going to learn, though, is something called the discriminant, which is actually just a piece of this. It's a piece of the quadratic formula. And I'm going to explain it here in a second. Um, so... When you guys get to class tomorrow, I will um, review for a little bit. I'll do like one or two of these and one or two of these. And then it's a six-question quiz, okay? Three quadratic formulas, three discriminants, five points each, okay? I just want to make sure everyone's where are we where I am before I start talking. You good? Okay, the discriminant is simply this piece of quadratic formula. It's just, write it, b squared minus 4ac. Did I include the square root? No. no. So you don't include the square root. So remember how we did quadratic formula yesterday? And I'm going to put it up here. I'm going to put some examples up. Remember we would plug it all in. So just I'll, I'll put it back up there. Look, guys. I plugged a, b, and c into quadratic formula. And remember then we went right to the, the radical and we found this number and we wrote it there. We found those numbers, we put it there. And then we either added or subtracted and we got 64 in that case. 64 would have been the discriminant in that problem. What would the discriminant have been in this problem? 84, not the square root of 84, okay, just 84. So that's the discriminant. Why are we talking about the discriminant? The discriminant is a, just a quick and easy way to find out how many solutions you're going to get, and I'll explain, and what type of solutions you're going to get. Okay? So I'll come back to those ideas in a second. Here's what I want you to write down so you have it for today. If you get a number greater than zero when you do this work, that means you'll have two real solutions, if you kept going and did the whole formula, okay? If you do the discriminant work and it's greater than zero, so any positive number, that's what that means. Greater than zero is code for a positive number, any number. It could be one, it could be 101, it could be a million and one. Any number that is positive, and look, we saw that. This is a positive 64. We ended up getting two real numbers, no imaginary, okay? Um, 84, positive number. We ended up with two solutions. Look at your homework. Um, our discriminant, where is it? Oh, right here. We got a negative, negative 100. We got two what type? Imaginary, imaginary solutions. So let's go to that next one. And I'm going to do, do examples, but let's just write some of the notes down. B squared minus 4AC. If you get a number less than zero, what's that code for? Or when I say a number is less than zero, what does that mean? That they're negative, okay? If you, and 
that would be two imaginary solutions. That means there, there's an I in it, right? So if I had this 100 is my um, discriminant, that would be plus or minus 10, right? That's two real solutions. If my discriminant was um, negative 100, I would get plus or minus 10 I, okay? Two, two solutions, right? Two of them, one is real, one has an I in it. That's the only difference. But there's one more type. Sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. How come y'all aren't yelling at me? Everybody should be yelling at me. Um, don't yell at me, I'll cry. I would. I'm trying to see, did we not have one that had a... Anybody, can anybody think of one more type we would get? I don't think we had one yesterday. Yes, if your discriminant is equal to zero, why don't we get two solutions? We only get one and it's gonna be real, but why? Because zero is the only number in the world that doesn't have a positive and a negative. So if you get the square root of zero, the answer is just zero, right? We never put a plus or minus in front of a zero. So if you do your discriminant and you got an answer of zero, you would say one real solution. Remember a couple days ago, I know this is reaching, but a couple days ago you guys factored one and you got the same answer twice, but you only wrote it once. Because I said, if you get one third, one third, it is technically two solutions, but it's really, we only write it one time because it's the same thing. That's when you would have had a zero as your discriminant had you used this method. Okay, so let's put this into action. Let's see what I'm talking about, right? So let's use the discriminant on this one. So here I give you a quadratic. Is it in standard form? What, sh what does she mean by that? She's me. What does she mean by standard form? Yeah. We want zero on one side and the other side exponents in descending order. Sometimes it's given to you like that, sometimes it isn't, all right? And all we're doing is not the whole thing, just the b squared minus 4ac. So a is 2, b is negative 10, and c is 7. That's how we started all the problems yesterday. And now I'm just going to plug in b squared minus 4ac. Notice there's no radical. That's a common mistake. They like, students love putting the radical in there. And let's do the work. Negative 10 squared is 100, right? And then don't forget, we're going to, every single time that we do this, we're going to start with a negative 4, okay? Negative 4 times 2 times 7. Now, if, when I hit enter, if I get a negative answer, I will subtract. If I get a positive answer, I will add. I get minus 56, which is 44. That is my discriminant. 44 is the discriminant. Now, how many solutions am I going to have? Two, and what type would be real? Okay, if you get a positive number, it will always be this answer, okay? So there's like three parts to the answer. What's the discriminant? How many solutions? What type of solutions, okay? Let's try another one. Mm -mm -mm. I don't like that one. Why, let me think for a second. Okay. What's my A value, y'all? One. B would be negative six. And C would be nine. All right? Let's plug in. Oops, that's a six. Negative six squared minus four times A times C. Oh, 
negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. Remember, this number is always going to be positive. And then I type in my calculator, negative 4 times 1 times 9, and I get negative 36. My discriminant is 0. That's the discriminant. That tells me I'm going to get how many solutions? One solution. And what type of solution? Zero. Wait, wait. It's, well, it's, yeah, the 4 is part of the equation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, here's how, you know, I'm going to do one more so you guys can see. I'm going to do this same problem, and I'm going to change a sign in it, okay? I'm sorry, I can't fit it. Let me try to see if I can. I'll do it. So, no, I'm going to do that. Okay. So let's do, let's call one C. If I did x squared, no, that's not going to work. plus 6x minus 9. It's not going to work. That's not going to work. Um, I'm trying to get it so... Oh, here. Sorry, we have to change that. Okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. Don't get mad at me. Don't yell at me. Don't. Please don't. Please don't. I'll cry. Um... What if I gave you this? Because I want to give you one that's missing a number. Okay. Guys, that is still a quadratic. Shh. What makes you a quadratic is that the biggest power is 2. That's what makes it a quadratic. We should be able to look at this and say A is what? 1. one. B is what? 0. Zero. And C is 25. Okay, that's important. If it had, don't write this, but I could also give you that problem. That would be A is 1 and B is 25 and C is 0. Because there's no X. B is the number in front of the X, okay? And if there's no X, we have no B. No in math means 0. Okay, so let's do um, B squared, B squared minus 4 times A times C. 0. And then when I do negative 4 times 1 times 25, I get negative 100. My discriminant is negative 100. How many solutions am I going to have? Two. Two solutions. But they're going to be imaginary because it's negative. Think ahead. We're not. I'm not having you do the whole quadratic formula. But if you did, you would have had a negative 100 under the radical. Because we actually did the same problem yesterday, or similar to it yesterday, where you got a negative 100 on the radical. So you did the square root of negative 100 was 10i, plus or minus 10i over 2, which simplified to 5i. So you get two solutions every time except for a 0. You can't have a positive and a negative 0. So if it's positive, it's two real numbers. If it's negative, it's two imaginary. If it's a zero, it's one real. That's it. Good. See, that's not bad, right? You get it? It makes sense if you really think about where, where, where would you go with this after that. Okay. All right. Let's look at the homework. Oh, I meant to. Okay, so we're on page 180, which is on the back of yesterday's. This is B8, eight, eight, six, B5? Yes. Is it B6? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I have last year's notes. I have, I don't know what these notes are. Oh, yesterday's. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, I'm not about busy work. I could easily have assigned the whole section. I'm just giving you the odds. That's enough for you to understand it, okay?
So first step, for whether it's yesterday's work or today's work, standard form is important, right? So we're happy with the way it is right here. So we can identify A, B, C, and then we're going to plug right in to the discriminant. Okay, so negative 11 squared is 121, right? And then I'm just putting this in my calculator. If I get a negative, I subtract. If I get a positive, I add. So when I put that in my calculator, I get negative 4, I have negative 4, times 1, times negative 26. I get positive 104. That means add 104. Okay, Paris, because you were getting confused with that yesterday. We already used the negative by plugging in the calculator. Okay. And so our discriminant is 225. That's the discriminant. Because it's a positive number. Try it. You just have to do the odds. You can do more if you want. We don't care what the solutions are. This is just getting us a quick glimpse of what we would get if we did keep going. Okay. All right. I'm going to put the key up without the work. If you're not getting the answer, you ask me and I will come help you. Yeah. Just the discriminant. Just the discriminant. And I'll do one of each type before we take the quiz tomorrow. But be here on time, be ready to pay attention, but I want to still give you plenty of time to work. It is, it really is. Look over yesterday's and make sure you don't have questions about quadratic formula too, because we have a lot of time for you to work on any makeup work right now. Any questions? Are you ready for tomorrow? You could work on Albert I.O. if you haven't done it yet.
one of them is the head of the map in the county, and the other one is like one of the like, they, they come in. Do they find you when the person doing it? Then I look up.
still recording, talking about my content.